Feeling friends is this concept that I came up with landing bed one night. I have all these close friends who have these wonderful stories, stories that can help change the world, life experiences that can help other people believe in themselves, hold tight to their dreams and make their dreams reality. On Feeling Friends, we talk about God. We talk about love, relationships. I have celebrity friends. I have non-celebrity friends. I have church members, family members. But when you watch and listen to Feeling Friends, you will learn and you will laugh. It's a community of friends helping to build each other up. So tune in to Feeling Friends every Sunday on WHCR 90.3 FM. Or you can catch me on YouTube at Feeling Friends Radio. All right. I'll see you there. WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. What's up, everybody? It's me, Phil, and I'm back here live on air with you, my friends. I've got a special guest, uh, two, three special guests today, but I got my best friend. We're going to co-host together. We have been trying to come up with this thing for the past, I don't know, four years, but she's here today. You guys know her. She kicked off my first season on air on Feeling Friends. So I'm going to bring in my best friend, Ivan Scott. Hey, hey, what's how, up, you how you doing? Big hair, don't care. I love it. I <laughs> did the locks. You know how to switch it up on y'all. Oh yeah, I forgot you did have locks. Yeah, you did. I had the blonde locks, and now I'm back to the black and natural. I love it. I love it. Thank How's you. everything going in Atlanta? Man, everything is going great. It's cold here in Atlanta right now, but cool? everything's good. We have a lot going on, and I'm so excited to be back here with you so I can tell you what we have going on and uh, some some events and some platforms that we're Absolutely. launching pretty soon. Well, listen, we've got a great show today. Today we're talking about everything, co-parenting, right? Single parent life, how to join families. Why don't you go ahead and take over and tell us what we're talking about today? Yeah, man, I'm so excited to um, bring out some really great people that I've met uh, Chris and Angela White, they are married and they're a wonderful couple. I've actually had the honor of um, being a moderator with Chris on a couple of panels. He's okay. the founder, him and Angela actually are the founder of an organization called Father Movement, which will allow them to tell us more about. But they're a great couple with a, a beautiful mission and purpose in life. And they approached myself and my friend Alina Smith to be okay. a part of a group called Blended Better. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Is Blended Better. Better. I love it. Better. Yep. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring in Chris and Angela to the studio. What's up, y'all? Hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Y'all look great. The light is great. <laughs> okay, cool. We'll leave it as is then. It looks good. It looks good. Yeah, yeah. So let's go ahead and tell the people who you are. Okay, so my name is Chris White, and this is my wife. Angela. <laughs> and uh, first and foremost, we're a blended family. We've been married almost 10 years now, and uh, we have a nonprofit called Father Movement. And Father Movement uh, essentially helps to build strong families, especially black families. We work, uh, as the name would lead you to believe, primarily with fathers. But we found that we need to expand that and work with moms as well so that we have both people on the same page. And we're building a sol solid foundation for the family. Now, why did you think this organization was a great organization to start? It sounds wonderful. I think it's a wonderful idea. But why was this important to you all to bring to the community? Yeah. So when you have a blended family, typically that means you had uh, another family before then that didn't work out so great. And so uh, that, that was my case. Um, and so going through a divorce and a custody battle um, and just ongoing challenges really learned more about the obstacles dads face, uh, both uh, real, uh, tangible obstacles and also perceived obstacles that they face when trying to be in the lives of their children. And so I really wanted to serve children by working with dads. And then uh, when I met Angela, uh, she came on board with me and we started this together and uh, we've been, we've been rocking and rolling ever since. Well, listen, a lot of dads go through a lot. And yeah, uh, I mean, it, those Tyler Perry movies are real. Let me tell you, yeah. so, it's a, it's a whole lot of, you know, Ivy did a show. She kicked off my season. Uh, Ivy, you have you can tell your story about how. And how, how did you all? How did you remember? Yeah, you, you know, it's so funny because me and Chris, we have so many similarities. So it was like perfect that I had an opportunity to meet Chris because, you know, coming on the other side of, it, you know, also being divorced and having a child and then coming out of that divorce and what, did that look, what does that look like afterwards? Right. And 
uh, we um, met each other at an event called Trust Your Strength, uh, the Miracles Gala. And Chris was the moderator for the father's panel. And I was the um, MC and the moderator for the mother's panel. Mm -hmm. And one thing I loved hearing about father movement there. And Chris was able to pull out a level of vulnerability with those black fathers that many of us had never seen. A lot of them themselves were surprised by how vulnerable they were. And so um, me and I plucked Chris again uh, when I had opportunity to um, to plan another event for blended families. And so from that, we both realized that, you know, we had a similar life's purpose and really was, you know, although we came from some, you know, unfortunate marriage that didn't last, that mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it's the end of life. It doesn't mean that it's the end of happiness and how can we better equip um, black families and even our own families so that they can be blended better. So that's how this came better. about. And, um, you know, I think it's, you know, for me, with my organization, Ivy League marketing, which is powered by the Black Ivy League ecosystem, mm -hmm. it's all about the empowerment of us as Black mm -hmm. women and men together, not being separate. And so I think that's what's so beautiful about this is that um, it's an equal balance of Black men and women working together. Working together. Right. Now, Angela, I want to bring you in this. What is, what is co-parenting for those people who don't know, who have no idea uh, what this is? What is exactly co-parenting? Great question. So co-parenting is basically uh, bringing two parents together for the sake of the child, raising the child together. So a co-parent can be uh, like myself. I had a previous relationship with my daughter's father. And so we co-parent our daughter together. So we are not in a relationship, but we both have common goals for our child to make everything in the best interest of the child. And so we co-parent. Mm -hmm. And it's so important. You keep saying child. It is about the child, right, Ivy? Absolutely. It is about the child. We have to take. I don't have kids. You know, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you have to take it out of yourself because you know a lot of women and men. You have the the, the brotherhood organization, but a lot of people make it about themselves. I can't oh be yes. You, right? I can't be with you, so I'm gonna do everything. I'm gonna be vengeful against you. You can't see your child because you know. So yeah. let's do that. How do we get over those humps? And Ivy, you can jump in here, whatever. Uh, how yeah. do we, you know, uh, get past that? with the jealousy and envy and and taking yourselves out of the equation make it's not about the mom it's not about the dad it's about the well-being and growth and development of the child and once people get over their hurt feelings and different things that can get in the way of that uh it's it will be better for the child right. so you know you have people that come from uh different relationships like Chris for example it didn't work out and um you know that situation is um something that we want people to learn from and not do we don't want you holding the child from the father or holding the child from the mother because of your own experiences or feelings that you have with that parent and that's another reason why father movement was created to help mm -hmm. fathers in that way as well, because there are women that hold ch their children from the dad because they're upset or different re reasons. And same thing for women. You have women who don't have custody of their children and the dads hold those kids from the mother. And so what this is all about is empowering parents and educating them on what's right for the child. So let's all just grow up together. That's so it. Yeah. Make sure yeah. That That's child, it. Okay. Because what people don't realize is that you are really affecting your child. Because when the dad is not there, there are different factors. I grew up both of my parents in the house, but there are different factors when the mother is there and the father's not. And you you have so many issues that right are missing, right? And you try to yeah. self validation, and people go through so many things, right? I, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think Chris. Oh, go ahead, Chris. Oh, go ahead, Chris. I was just going to say that I think you have you really have to separate the the relationship from the parenting relationship because we begin to have a distrust for somebody, right? Maybe they break our heart or whatever it may be. We no longer trust them. Well, you still have to trust them with your child if they're a fit mm -hmm. parent. Right. If they've been a strong parent for the last four or five years or whatever it is of the child's life, um, you should assume that they're going to continue to be that way and that it is in the best interest of the child that they have a strong relationship with mom and dad. And so if you remove yourself from that equation right away and say, yes, maybe I don't trust this person as a partner anymore, but that doesn't mean that they're not the great parent that they always were the entire time. Mm -hmm. 
You know, Ivy, you say something all the time when we talk and people know we're best friends. You say, I trust, and people know you're divorced now, yeah. that I trust him enough to make sure my child is all right. Yeah. Where do you get the fortitude to say, I don't know this other person. I don't know this person, and I don't know if my child should be around it. How do you get to that part? Y'all can help me with this because you guys have blue. Mm. How do you say, okay, I have to be, I have to put it in my heart to say, I trust my others, my ex to make sure my child is okay. So Chris and I, me, Chris and Angela and our, um, our other friend Alina, when we first had our first meeting about Blend It Better and we talked about um, how you go through that healing, because mm -hmm. a lot of times you know that the other parent, you are with this person. You so yeah. you really love that child. Right. right. So mm -hmm. with that being said, you know that that parent wouldn't do anything to put your child in harm's way. Right. Period. Um, but you have to go through yourself a level of healing on your own because mm -hmm. a lot of times we're like, well, I need to meet her or I need right, to meet right. him. Yes, that's true. But regardless if you meet them or not, your child is going to be around that new individual regardless of the relationship. So for right. me personally, um, I, ha I, I don't have a relationship with my um, with my ex's wife. But I really don't need to because I have a relationship with him. I communicate mm -hmm. with him and I'm co-parenting with him. At any mm -hmm. point, if my child comes back disrupted or, you know, disheveled or anything, then that's when we need to have a deeper conversation. But I'm not going to make a complicated situation even more complicated just right. to be messy or petty. Absolutely. Or right. Right. So, um, Chris, like we, we, we talked about like that level of healing and what that requires yeah. and that's prayer and that's therapy. Um, but for, for me, and I think that's what we're really trying to convey to people is giving them the tools that they need in order to get to that place where they can move on and right. just have a mutual respect for each other as parents for your, your child. You know, I always respect that about you because your maturation level was always, it's always been up there, especially when it comes to like, I trust him enough to make sure my child is all right. Now, right. Chris, did you guys have some Tyler Perry drama when it came to, to your the other spouses? Absolutely. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. We still do. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah we I'm do. talking about it. No, I need some ratings. So y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we're well, we gonna keep it PG. <laughs> yeah. So, so here, here, here's the thing. Um, when you, when you are in a situation where you do have uh, drama and you have issues with parenting time and all of that sort of thing, uh, you also have children that can yeah. be exposed to that and be aware of it. So, um, I will say this: that um, we we have found ourselves in a situation where uh, my parenting time has, uh, you know, been interrupted. Um, you know, several different times and, and we have to go through the court system and try to resolve things. And so it's obviously very difficult. It's challenging on the kids. Um, it's challenging on me. It's challenging on Angela as well. So um, it, it's a very difficult situation to deal with. And that's why when you do select a co-parent, I'm sorry, a, a partner in which you're going to blend your family with, you need to make sure that somebody is going to be there through all of that thick and thin, because in the very beginning of our marriage, we were dealing with a lot of conflict mm -hmm. with, um, you know, and challenges and seeing the children. And that, that's oftentimes the case, too. You might have a parent. Even that, while dating, we were. That's true. You might have a parent that has an issue with um, this person moving on and, you know, having a marriage or a new relationship. And then that can show as conflict and interruption in parenting time. Right. And the kids are affected at that point because then you get into situations where uh, parental alienation is happening, where things are being said to the children that shouldn't be said and they're affected in a negative way so we want to be able to help parents avoid those types of situations and and that's redirect the focus you know i love it because kids tend well i know i did growing up because you know my parents they got to you know what all parents do you tend yeah. to take sides oh you know, yeah you take, you take sides. Definitely. So like, okay well i hear one side but mm -hmm. if a mother is like berating the dad then they're gonna be like well my dad ain't doing nothing from, you know and he might be trying yeah. to see a kid but then he won't and then it's another side. so we have to be very careful let's speak to Making sure your children are protected in that space because y'all have key. I don't know how old are your children, uh, Kristen. We got four total. Okay. Sixteen down to seven. Okay, so, perfect. So that's a great. Yep. Age. How do you protect your children from 
uh, seeing all that negativity? Do you do you tell them what's really going on or do you show them how do you? It, it gets very tricky, actually. So um, I would say before you get to the point of where there is parental alienation, um, one, you can control what you do, meaning, you know, you're not going to bad mouth because when you do bad mouth the parent, like, you know, even honestly, Married couples do that to a certain extent yeah. and it's not so dangerous because they're both in the house and they're, you know, it's still in love, hopefully. And, you know, you can see uh, the, the truth. A right. child can see the truth. Yeah. But when you now are out of the house mm -hmm. and you have these two separate homes that you're living in going from here to there, mm -hmm. when you do bad mouth the parent the child doesn't necessarily know what to believe right. and then they do like you said pick sides naturally and mm -hmm. it becomes more and more dangerous so um the short answer is therapy mm -hmm. and consistent therapy to yeah. stick with it and make sure that your children continue to receive that and then i would say also education with the parents because a lot of times when parents do bad mouth their children or i'm sorry their their child's father or mother mm -hmm. they don't know that they're really damaging the child exactly they're really hurting the child yeah. the most yeah mm -hmm. because the child is still forming in the brain so they're forming mm -hmm. this, they're forming negativity instead of positivity i mean yeah. how do you with the little child i mean i, mean, I don't know how you you know i know kids yeah. how do you okay. deal with that yeah. So, no, that's a, that's a great question. So my son is three years old. He'll be four in July. And so he is definitely at those formative years where he is very observant. He, uh -huh. you know, repeating things. He now is communicating and he can express his feelings. So um, it's always been uh, a priority for me to never badmouth his father because uh, regardless of our dynamics, that has nothing to do with my son. Right, um, right. Our relationship and what happened in the past mm -hmm. is no reflection of him. And I always want to surround him with love. Right. right, right. Mm -hmm. so, um, that is not only with therapy, but what, um, when we got a divorce, we were in Maryland. And so part mm -hmm. of the Maryland divorce judicial system is that you're required to take a co-parenting class. Mm -hmm. I wish that was something that was mandated for everyone um, is because when that advice comes from a third party, it's better received. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you, as one, one side of the co-parent, you try to recommend something to the other parent, it's just right. it's not going to be received well. But if you take right. those co-parenting courses, it really does give you a lot of great fundamentals on how you can raise a healthy child. And so everybody dynamic is, is different. Mm -hmm. um, and I say that uh, you guys probably saw me waving just yeah. a second ago. Um, I'm now in a relationship. Who was that? Was that my friend? Yeah, my that's, that's my Is that's he right there? Come on and carry it <laughs> over there. Come on. <laughs> 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 I'm so, now, yeah. you know, it's so cool having Angela and Chris as friends um because get a chair what's there up? you go what's up, look, look, at, look at the beard look at the beard on point that's real that's right <laughs> what's going on man? what's up man good to all right so rick is gonna he's gonna be involved um in in the, the okay. space as well but us being in a relationship now for a year um is gonna be so great to be able to um, you know, talk to uh, Chris and Angela more. And Absolutely. so in the process, what was cool about it is like, um, we are a product of the brand, right? Meaning right. Mm -hmm. we're, all, yeah. we're all experiencing this at the same time. Mm -hmm. And we want to be able to break those generational curses. And that means coming together as a community so that mm -hmm. we can better educate each other. Because to, to go back to your question, we can't control the other person. Unfortunately, can. we can't. So if they, for whatever reason, do decide to bow, bad mouth, all we can do is maintain our peace so that we can be a good example for our child. Absolutely. Yep. And okay. I'll share a quick story with you about uh, my daughter when she was around your uh, child's age. Ivy, she was about three or four years old. And um, I've always been an advocate of never talking bad about her dad, no matter what, you know, um, we've had challenges over the years around inconsistency and not, you know, doing what you say you're going to do and being there for her the way I would like him to. And so, um, never spoke about him in any kind of way to her. And so I, for father's day, she was going to spend time with him for father's day. So I always would get him some little gifts here for father's day from her. So I bought a book. Uh, Dwayne Wade wrote a book about dads 
And so she gave him the book and she took it to, uh, the, he lives in another state. Mm -hmm. So she went on a trip with him to the state and came back and I, uh, I was bathing her. And I said, Carrie, how did um, your dad like the gift? I gave him the gift and I told him this book is for bad dads. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what? You know that what? <laughs> bad dad. I said, who told you that? I right. said, you never heard that from me. I said, oh my God. So mm -hmm. I called him and I said, Carrie told me what she said. I'm saying my child's name. She yeah. she told me what she said to you. I never said that. He's like, oh, it's all good. It's all good. So, of course, he thought I said that, but it made me really like, Your mama said that about me. <laughs> oh, my God. And I never said that. I, I, I never heard her say it, but I kind of questioned, like, did she say and something? And so, it's like, like okay, so. so what am I doing? Yeah. I may not be saying right. that, right. but what am I doing to make my child feel that way right. that this book is for that? That's, or what is he doing? Right. True. You know, so yeah. what is going on? So it made me really question my body language, my, you know, not necessarily words, but how I act when his Facial name comes up. So yeah. I was even more mindful after that, because even though I may feel a certain way about his actions and how he does, mm -hmm. I don't want her to feel that way because it makes her feel bad. Absolutely. I don't want her to feel bad. And, and, and one, not to dominate the conversation, but on this side, um, questions the type of questions you ask can really influence your child as well so mm -hmm. like is anybody over there messing with oh, you yeah. Mom, Re repeatedly right repeatedly <laughs> asking it's like do you feel safe over there are you comfortable you know yeah. like those kinds of questions over and over again leads a child down a, a trail where they're like well should i feel comfortable yeah. over here should i feel safe over here you but, know so those sorts of things can be damaging as well let me ask and that's, you, a, but that's that a norm important? though for mom isn't that important to ask a child though too because you are putting your child in where you don't absolutely know. well that's why i say repeatedly like for sure like, ask that like you know brain, like, yeah you know yeah i get that part yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i'm definitely question. gonna ask are people are people touching you what is going on you know i think that's yeah important. gotta people do that don't know, yeah you know yeah. Me, i don't have kids but i want to get yeah. rick in the conversation rick How's your, your situation been with Pat? Well, welcome to the show, number one, brother. Thank you for coming on. <laughs> how, how has your situation been with co-parents, especially with Ivy? Um, has it has it been a great situation? You know, jump in here. <laughs> Over there you talk. Uh, I mean, it's, it's it's you know, it is what it is. It's kind of <laughs> not tricky. You gotta <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's one of those situations you just you know, you gotta kind of roll with the punches, but as a yeah. as a father, you know, and being a, a black father with all the stereotypes we have against us, it's kind of like a lot of times when it's against you, you can't really say nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. You gotta kind of be pretty strong, you know. You gotta be, have a strong mindset mm -hmm. with all those challenges, but you can't really say too much. You just gotta roll with it. You know, you know I, yeah. I hear you. I hear you, I hear it in your voice, Rick, and I, you know, I don't know what you're going through, but it's, but no, that's a story of a lot of black men, and it's not. Mm -hmm. It's like they want to speak up, but if I speak up, it may go against my child. It may, yeah. you know, it's a lot. As I'm getting older, as I've been, I've grown up together. We and I've been on each other for 20 years. There are some vindictive women out there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. intentionally trying to hurt men. Yeah. And these black brothers really want to be a part of these children's lives. Yeah. What do we need to do in the community? And y'all speak collectively to say, let's stop. Let, you know, like this, what you guys are doing is, is excellent. Yeah. But how do we get it on a larger scale? Like, we, we got to change the mindset when it comes to making sure I'll, that these black men see their children. I'll, I'll speak to this because when you talk about black men, you also know that black men and black families have quite literally been under attack mm -hmm. uh, yes. for generations, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, they go they go in and they separate the the, the man from the, the woman, mm -hmm. and they don't forcibly do that now, but they do it with policies, right? So you had these policies meant to assist um, young mothers and, you know, help them with housing, with food and these things. But then if you wanted some of these uh, benefits, you couldn't have the man in your house. So right away, there's this power yeah, dynamic. It's and it's Claudine, right? That movie Claudine. Right, right, right. And so it's really easy to say, you know, get out of my house whenever an argument comes up because you're not on the lease. If somebody comes in to check on y'all, you got to go run and hide. It's a terrible position to be in, right? Um, so we need to change policies. And then as far as family law goes, when you do, unfortunately, you know, break up or maybe you were never together, you need to assume a 50-50 custody. 
where it's like the assumption is not mom gets the baby full time and dad gets a weekend here or there. It should be a, it took two to make them. It takes two to raise them. And so there should be a assumption of 50, 50 custody. And then we modify from there based off of the dynamic. And then also the other thing, and I'll stop here cause I could keep going. Um, <laughs> I'll stop here and say child support, child support, um, state agencies are incented by the federal government mm -hmm to collect as much as they can because then they get matching dollars from the federal government, right? So they're quite literally incentivized to say, I'm gonna place the child with mom and then we're gonna come to dad to not only collect child support, but recoup, we're gonna recoup the, the free um, healthcare, we're gonna recoup the um, childcare, all these things, we're gonna come back to dad and get. And if dad is you know, making, what maybe used to be $12 an hour, maybe it's $15 an hour now. And he's trying to like live on his own. How do you even do that? You can't. Mm -hmm. you right. Can't. You can't. I'm right. in Manhattan. You can't do it. That's one of those kids. They got time. Well, but, for sure, I, Manhattan, I, but anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> anywhere. anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, I require what you're jumping this. How important is it to be equally yoked when you're meeting mm -hmm. these people? How's important? Yeah. So, um, one, when you are coming out of, of a marriage or a relationship where you've had a child and you all break up, you really need to take some time for yourself. Um, that's how you get to the steps of becoming equally yoked because you got to know yourself first to have to be equal with anyone else. Right. So, you know, I, I, I know for me, I took that time. I took that time to grieve. I took that time to acknowledge who I am and what I want. And like I told you at the first show is that I'm not going to put the onus of the demise of the relationship all on my my ex i chose him so at a certain i have to take responsibility for saying yes i want to be in that relationship and the actions that i took so mm -hmm. um in terms of being equally yoked is it's just like you go about looking for a career you you educate yourself you you go out there and you observe you figure out what you like what you don't like what you're good at what your weaknesses are and you never settle especially mm -hmm you have a child you never can settle because whomever you decide to bring into your life that person is not going to be in your child's life right. and so um for me it was a, a lot of vetting but i wasn't afraid to date you know because your child needs to see you happy they need to see you at your best self so not neglecting your happiness not neglecting your time so if you have the village to be able to go out and date and empower yourself and educate yourself that's how you can get to a place where I can go out and openly find someone that um, I'm that I that I can partner with. And so in terms of Rick, you know, I realized that he was the person that I've been wanting even before my, my previous relationship. But I wasn't being honest with myself initially about what I wanted. And mm -hmm. so, um, now, um, like I said, it's like it's like going to work at work. Your company has value. Uh, a value statement. They have core principles. They have core value. You know, Bill, you and I talk about that all the time mm -hmm. is making sure that whomever you decide to be with, they share that same value system as you. Mm -hmm. if they do. Then you're going to be on one accord on a lot of decisions that you have to make, especially yeah. as it comes to those um, those really critical um, decisions and mm -hmm. having those crucial um, conversations. Rick, you have any you know, add to that. You're right. You know, <laughs> know how to follow that. Well, let, yeah. me, let me be his. Let me just say that yeah. Rick also has an organization called uh, Power for Black Legacy. Yeah. And so he is all about uplifting the oh, black good. people from a financial literacy point of view. Mm. Finance. That's excellent. That's huge, excellent. Right. That could be a huge strain. Absolutely. On the relationship, which mm -hmm. then all that could come to is demise. Right. So mm -hmm. we when you know when you talk about blended better, it's 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 more than surface level. What we're trying to do is get to the root of a lot of these mm -hmm. issues, which mm -hmm. is how the judicial system and how the politics have broken our families, how mm -hmm. crime has been an issue, how lack of jobs, drugs, right. finances. If we, can, if we can help a little bit in that way, that can yeah, really um bridge back what has made our black community um, what it made it strong, and that was the, the power of us. I love that. Um, and so we're running close on time, uh, short on time, you guys. So I want to get Chris and Angela, I want to get you guys in here. 
final thoughts about what we need to do to for that. Like Ivy, you just you did an excellent summation of that. What do what do we need for blended families? How can we help motivate and move these families forward to where you all are today? Well, um, I, I I had something to say about equal yoke, so I'm gonna just go there real quick. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, so just keep talking, keep talking. Go ahead. I, what I think is, um, you know, with with Angela and I, because I like to, um, you know, personalize it. I think where we are equally yoked, yes, of course, faith, but also um, priorities, and also um, the ability and the willingness to work on our relationship. And that was very important to me when I tried to select a mate the next time around is like, I need to find somebody that's willing to work at it. And, and as you said, Ivy too, you mentioned, you know, take some responsibility because, you know, there's two people in a relationship. And so even if I'm 80% wrong, that still means she's 20, mm -hmm. you right. know? Um, so, so that's very important. And I think um, when you find somebody like that, you have a really good chance of making it work as we are right now, um, because it's been rough as well. There's been some rough patches, but we're always willing to work. And so, and it's not, you know, sometimes I'm the bigger person, but I'm all, not all the times, No, you know, sometimes she is the bigger person and it's really refreshing to have that in a relationship. Not often. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's not kidding, but you know, she, she is though sometimes, you know, so, Absolutely. um, so like you have to have somebody who compliments you because you're not going to be the same in everything like parenting styles. Our parenting styles are different, mm -hmm. but yet we can compliment each other and we value each other's differences. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and tell people how can they contact you guys or just give us your social media handles and everything like that. At Father Movement Inc. on Instagram and Facebook. Yep. And Ivy and Rick, how can we get, a, get in touch with you guys? Yeah, so I am black underscore Ivy League. That's I V L E um, A G U E. Um, that's how you can find um, more black, the Black Ivy League, and hear more about Linda Better. Um, this mm -hmm. is our soft launch of our new organization. Yeah. Yes. You know, you might not see a lot out there now, but more is coming. So um, definitely keep your ears on the street for Blended Better because we, we have a lot in store. Well, thank yeah. you. Go ahead, Rick. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I'm at uh, Ricky Ben, R I K K I B E N on Instagram. I'm bigger on Facebook. It's uh, Ricky Ben on Facebook. That's my name. And uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at PBL Investments. You know, I'm just throwing up on there trying to, you know, get a little following. Good, you know, good. helping me out. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was King, right? So yeah. we're going to yeah. so hey, Y'all need to wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just hold tight for me to break in the green room for me, okay? Thank you guys okay. so much. I want to thank Chris and Angela, Ivy and Rick for coming on. Listen, blend it better. Let's make these black family stronger. Let's start to get our maturation level up. Let's put God first, right? That makes a huge difference. Remember, seek you first the kingdom of God. Everything's going to work out if you put him first. You're watching Phil and Friends right here on WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. I'll see you guys next time. All right, peace.